Good morning. What I have behind me here is a Caterpillar 268B skid steer. It's a wheel skid steer. Um, what's going on with this machine is that it's leaking a large amount of hydraulic fluid in a very short amount of time uh, when it's being operated. Uh, the customer, he complained that it was leaking hydraulic fluid, you know, primarily at the bottom of it. So what he did um, before he brought it to me was he pulled the cab up on it. All right, and when he pulled the cab up, he found that here, oops, he found that here behind your control uh, control valve here, there's a vent way down there. And he said there was hydraulic fluid coming out of that. All right, now, on these particular machines here, when you see oil coming out of that vent, that's a dead giveaway that something's going on with your drive motor here where it's pushing hydraulic fluid into your chain box. All right, and then this here is your chain box. All right, the drive motor's right here in the center, and then it's got, you know, your sprockets that go out to both stub shafts. All right, now, <clears throat> the way that I usually would go about this is that I would, first thing I would do to verify, see if it's a seal or say if it's a cracked housing, um, would be to just go ahead and pull your drive chain off and your drive spark sprocks and pull those off. Um, that's what I would do first. That way you can verify and possibly save your customer a little bit of money as far as labor time goes as opposed to pulling that drive motor out and sending it off and having it rebuilt especially if it's just as simple just a seal replacement because it's just a, just a regular old lip seal there so <clears throat> when you get ready to do that what you would do or what i like to do just to make things a lot simpler first thing i do you know obviously get the machine up on blocks and this particular machine here i don't have it cribbed 100 percent correctly um you know so don't eat me up about that um but get the machine up on blocks and then i take my wheels off once the wheels are off then I take these nuts here. These are seven eighths nuts. Take those loose. Take those loose. You know, you don't have to back them completely off. Just loosen them up and take your chain come along or a ratchet strap and you can go from, from one to the other. Go from one to the other to release tension on the chain here. And you can do that. Now, if you need to pull the chains completely off, what I found uh, working at Caterpillar, a lot of the machines that we worked on, um, they were customer machines and they've done some of the simple stuff like this before. Um, so if they've ever had to take the chain apart, what they'll do, they'll cut a link and put a master link in. This particular machine, it's got the factory chains and it's probably never been altered. Um, and you'll see this here. Now, you'll find that this link here, I've ground off the studs already or the pins, the pins here <laughs> uh, you'll find that I've ground those off and what I'll do there is that by doing that I'll take a air hammer or a chisel punch whatever and uh, knock the link apart and by doing that by doing that uh, I can just I can piece the chain back together pretty easily uh, with no issues um, you know or you know you can elect to put a, uh, a master link in you know either works just fine um when i do reuse a chain like this or uh, reuse one of the boxes here what i'll do i'll just take a welder you know and we're not trying to get it you know super hot or anything but i'll just go in and i'll kind of just buzz around the uh the pin there um that way it'll hold the link in place and the chain will still be able to flex and move back and forward um so it won't be locked up completely or anything um and by that just you know because i do realize that there are some folks out here that uh won't understand exactly what I meant. What I mean by buzzing in the link here or the box is that right here, I would just buzz right around the pin, right around the pin there. Um, not buzz around the edge of the box to the link behind it because that would mean the chain wouldn't be able to flex and move. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get this busted apart some and then I'm gonna show you uh, the next step. Okay, people, so I've got the chain apart uh, and like I was saying this is what your chain link will look like after it's uh, apart it's just you know you can take your punch or a uh, air hammer with a, a punch in on it and you just take and just hit against the pins uh, and it'll pretty much slide right apart uh, and here's the outer box link 
see? All right, after you do that, you've got an eight millimeter bolt and a big thrust washer. You pull that off, and then you've got two drive sprockets. Uh, both of them, they have a uh, spacer piece made into the gear, and I'm sorry about that, that's my air compressor that's running. Um, once you uh, get them apart, you'll notice that the spacers, they oppose each other. The outer drive gear, uh, it faces inside, and the inner faces towards the outside. Um, now, some people may know this, and some may not, with these caterpillars here, the way Caterpillar says to take the drives chains loose is that you can access a plate that's on the inside of the machine, like the inboard side of the machine. Um, and I'm going to attempt to show you the opposing side. <laughs> There's a plate that's behind or behind and under your pump assemblies here. There's a plate that's over there. And then there's one that is over there. All right. Now, you take those plates off. And I think there's, a, I think, two or three or four bolts. I can't remember exactly. But you pull those plates off. And then there's just one big bolt. And you take the bolt loose. And that bolt goes to the dry sprocket that's here in here and then it makes it simple because then you can take the drive sprocket you can set it down you can move it forward loosen the chain up with no issues however it's a pain in the ass to get to those plates uh, it's a lot simpler for me uh, to get right here and I do believe it probably would be a lot simpler for you to get there as well um, that's one of the things that I've done when I worked at Caterpillar um, and it saved me a bunch of time and a bunch of headaches um, and it helped me get to the part uh, to the repair a lot faster or to the troubleshooting part a hell of a lot faster um so i'm gonna go ahead and take this last chain off um that being said one thing i forgot to mention uh this back chain here what i do to keep from having to cut it or do anything with it what i'll do i'll take the rest of the bolts loose on the uh the axle stub here i'll take the rest of those nuts off and then i'll take the axle stub out and just pull it forward some, you know, take it completely off the studs and pull it forward some. And by doing that, it'll allow that chain to get enough slack in it where you can pull it completely off the rest of that, uh, that sprocket there. You can pull it off the rest of the way and, you know, it's a hell of a lot simpler. And then once you get it off, you know, you can just take it, set it back on, handful of, uh, handful of bolts and, or nuts or whatever, and you can put this stud, stub back on just, you know, as a placeholder or whatever. All right, folks. So, now, to get this drive motor out, uh, you've got a handful of hoses. I think it's about five or six hoses all together that you have to take off um, to get out of the way. Uh, you have to take this line off just for clearance to get the drive motor itself out. Uh, you've got your main feeds in, your directional uh, lines there. Uh, then you've got a, which you can't see, which is out of the screen here. Um, but I'll show you over here with it with this this one here. Uh, you're gonna have your lines for like your parking brake uh, on it. <laughs> your little smaller lines there. Um, something else. You'll have a couple plugs over here for your uh, joystick controls that you'll have to unplug. Oh, that's a relay there. Uh, but there, you'll have two plugs here. You just pull, move those out of the way. Um, something else that I do. Uh, like when you take this line here off, you'll take that line completely off. Once again, this is just a clip line just to pull off just so you can have more clearance to the pump itself. Uh, you could probably get away with just taking that line and taking it loose over there and just laying it back by just taking it completely off. Uh, and I'll cap the lines off. Uh, what I do here, uh, you're going to need to remove this pilot pump here. Um, when you take that off, what I do, I just take the lines loose there on the, the suction line there. And I'll take it and I'll just flip it up and just put a cap in it uh, instead of taking the line completely off. Uh, I usually try to be fairly quick with taking them, that line off because that'll have uh, a bunch of hydraulic oil in it. Uh, which this machine, it pretty much emptied the complete the tank into uh, that drive motor over there. So I don't expect it's going to be a whole bunch of oil in here, but it will be some in there. Um, once again, you know, I do that 
to make things uh, simpler for me as far as going back together. Um, if you're pretty quick, you really won't have much of an issue, much of a mess. Uh, either way, you're gonna have a mess, where, even if you do go ahead and drain the hydraulic tank completely um, beforehand. But, you know, coming from a Caterpillar dealership, you know, we were all, you know, pretty big about, you know, using caps and stuff. So, you know, if you use those uh, and you anticipate the mess that you're getting ready to have, you can be fairly quick and, you know, have minimal mess. Um, so I'm going to take these hoses off and I will give you an update video once I get these hoses off. Well, something else while I'm at it, I just thought about it. Um, these metal caps right here, these things right here are a lifesaver. I love these. Uh, they're a hell of a lot better than the blue plug kits or red plug kits or like clear plug kits. I hate those things because uh, usually what happens is that when you've got a job, say like this control valve right here, for example, say you've got a job where you got to reseal that control valve or pull it out for, you know, failure or whatever. A lot of times what will happen, and I've seen it happen a lot, uh, this is with experienced techs and this is with greenhorns. They'll leave a damn blue plug in and what will happen, uh, leave a blue plug in and then when you fire the machine up, you'll have a function that don't won't work or you'll starve a pump, starve a spool, anything. A lot of stuff happens and it'll be because of them damn blue plugs. I'm a real big fan of these metal caps right here. Metal caps, that's what I like to use, um, you know, when they can be used. And then, like for, like when you have something like this right here, uh, Caterpillar, they have a, a little a plate uh, that'll, that you, once you take this hose off, you can put it here between these two half clamps, uh, and those are really nice. Uh, something that I like to use, like say like when I pull this pump off right here, uh, if you get a brand new pump, or actually a reman pump sometimes, they'll come with uh, metal plates, you know, on both ends of them, you know, where your shaft comes through. Uh, it'll come with a plate and I like to keep those, you know, if I don't have to send a pump back, I'll keep those plates for when uh, I have to do a job like this. Cause once I pull this, this uh, pilot pump off, there's going to be a bunch of oil, uh, you know, that's going to want to come out, uh, because pretty much this housing right in here, uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty much open cavity aside from having the, uh, the shaft here uh, and so I'll have a plate there and that's a nice way of, of keeping things fairly clean um, or whatever you know you know with all on uh, with all moderation you know you're trying to keep things clean uh, you know something like this you're not gonna be able to make it like spotless uh, unless you spend a extremely amount of time you know coming in and pressure washing uh, and cleaning and you're gonna have to clean something like this two or three different times but you know you can keep things fairly uh, tidy, you know, with a little bit of preparation. Uh, like I said, you know, say, uh, I like to use a metal plate uh, that comes with brand new pumps, and I like to use these metal caps uh, whenever possible. Uh, something else, if you don't have those metal caps, say if you do have like a line uh, that you're gonna have, uh, you know, remade or whatever, I've done this a lot and I actually still have uh, some on my service truck for like some of the larger uh, caps, because these jokers can get expensive. Uh, for some of the larger caps, what I'll do, I'll take a line and what I'll do, uh, I'll take the old line and I'll cut it somewhere before the nut and I'll just put in uh, like a, a flat plate you know aluminum tin whatever you know whatever you can put in there and I'll put like some uh, silicone behind it you know if I'm just if I know I'm gonna use the plug strictly just to block off a line uh, while I'm having something rebuilt um, I wouldn't trust you know one of those lines to put pressure behind them that's where these metal caps come in uh, good at let's see if I got one here that's already off yeah See, like these caps here. Uh, it say if you're taking a, a you're taking a function off a machine. These are really good because like this uh, this plunger here. It's kind of encapsulated uh, with the cap itself. So uh, so you know when you put pressure to it, you know you don't have to worry about these jokers leaking. And this is actually an O-ring face seal too. So you also have the O-ring that uh, that that run, uh, that sits against that flat there which is uh, which is really good which is also going to help it help it seal as well all right so i've got just about everything taken care of here to pull this drive motor out um and you'll see here 
uh, all my lines and everything are off. The only thing I've got left, I've got four bolt, uh, nuts to take off here and four at the bottom. Um, the ones at the bottom can be a little bit of a booger to get to just because you just plain and simple just don't have uh, a lot of access to them, like clearance to them, but you can get them get them all uh, taken care of. Um, let me tell you something. So this right here is a Caterpillar uh, pilot pump. Okay, I'll tell you something interesting about those, uh, something that's a quick uh, troubleshooting if you ever have this happen. So, say you uh, fire your skid steer up one day and you don't have any hydraulic controls, um, you know, your machine won't move or anything. Something quick that you can check is to look and see, you know, aside from making sure it's got hydraulic fluid in it, but is to check and see if your hydraulic fan is actually running or not. Um, because if your hydraulic fan in the back isn't running, usually it's a pretty good sign that this pump here is either cavitating or you know it's failed in, at some point or another. Um, saves a bunch of time as far as troubleshooting and everything, and it's something simple, you know, um, to look at. Uh, and then you know just to pull this pump off here, it's really simple. Uh, you just got two Allens. You got one here, and you'll have one at the bottom, uh, and you have a you'll have your main suction line at the top and you'll also have a uh, line at the bottom that goes off to your uh, to your control valve. Uh, then you'll have this here uh, coupler. Uh, you'll see it's a difference in the splines, you know, so you can't reverse them or anything like that. Uh, you'll have that and pop it right out pretty quick. Uh, so I'm gonna work on getting this drive motor out uh, and I will give an update when I get to that point. Alright folks so you'll see this crazy contraption here that I have is used to pick this heavy ugly boy up. Uh, one of the things you'll see that I noticed I told you from prior is like there's a plate and then uh, that hose there I didn't have a, a plug to put in there or anything so I just took it and you know wrapped a, a plastic bag around it and zip tied it and it'll be fine you know it's just keeping dust out of it dust and dirt out of it um, anyways I'm gonna pull this big heavy boy out of here and then I'm gonna take it off to the hydraulic shop I'm gonna retain my metal caps for myself because you got to watch them uh, hydraulic shop sometimes sometimes them jokers will steal them caps you know like I had mentioned before uh, them caps are kind of expensive you know for what they are so you know if you bring something in they may take those metal caps for themselves and then send it back with the uh, with the plastic caps so uh, anyways I'm gonna pull this dude out and we're gonna wait and see what happens at the shop <laughs> 